Happy Independence Day. Are you glad to be here today and glad to be free? Um, I tell you, that, that last song kind of got me choked up. I'm going to be honest and real with you. I love that song, Amazing Grace. There, there's so much timeless truth to that message today. And I'm going to tell you today, this message isn't on grace, but grace is sufficient for every single thing you're facing right now in your life. Grace is, is deep enough for every single sin, hurt, habit, or hang-up that you might be going through today. That is the good news of the gospel. And, and I got a little choked up, so I think we need to begin with a dad joke just to kind of lighten things up a little bit. Is that okay? I'm now a dad, and I'm allowed to tell these jokes, um, so bear with me. Um, I have a question for you today. How come there are no knock-knock jokes about the 4th of July? Because freedom rings. <laughs> well, laugh at least, please. It'd make me feel better about myself because I doubted that one. I did. I thought, Brad, you shouldn't put that in the message. And I thought, oh, I better, I better. There, it was 4th of July weekend, and the children's church preschool teacher took the opportunity to tell her classroom about patriotism. And she says, we live in a great country. And she announced one of the things we should be happy about is that in this country, we're all free. Trevor, who was a little boy, and her class came walking up from the back and stood there and put his hands on his hips. And he says, um, excuse me, I'm not free, I'm four. <laughs> Are you glad you're free today and not four, right? Are you glad you're free? Did you know the 4th of July will not fall on a Sunday again until the year 2027? So today is a very unique opportunity that we get to celebrate together. We won't get this moment ever again with this same group of people. It's a special, unique opportunity to celebrate the independence and freedom here in our great country. Uh, we've been celebrating our nation's independence since 1776. We are 245 years old as a nation, so happy birthday, America, right? Yeah, and, and, and I want to tell you today that the 4th of July matters in our country because it reminds us to appreciate the sacrifices that were made by others for our freedom, right? I mean, the 4th of July is great with fireworks and with that barbecue and, and the parades and everything that we do, but... May we not forget the men and women who laid down their life for you and I and our freedom today. We're a patriotic church, as you can tell. We love America, and we're so glad that God has planted us right here. And I'm proud to be an American, right? I know you're not really supposed to be proud, but I'm proud to be an American. And, and not only that, I'm more proud to be a Christian. I'm more proud to be a believer in Jesus Christ today. But, but we want to be careful today, and, and this is a short little message here on Independence Day. We want to be careful, and, and we need to gain a greater understanding of where our highest priority and where our loyalty should really lie today. You know, it's great to be patriotic. Yesterday, I, I bought some flags, and I have 14 little flags, and, and we lined the driveway with them. We're patriotic. It's, it's great to show appreciation for your country and I believe that God has instilled in us this love for our country but let us remember today where our true freedom is found our true freedom today no matter what our nation is doing right this very hour our true freedom is found in Jesus Christ and in him alone like we we preached last Sunday you are part of the kingdom of God first. Seek the kingdom of God first, and then all of these things will be added unto you. Philippians 3.20 says, But we, you, the church, are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Aren't you glad to be a citizen of heaven today as a believer? And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior in, in other words today my highest level of patriotism should be in heaven today and in the things of god and the things that jesus taught 
Our allegiance and loyalty should be based on the things of God and the kingdom of God that he has prepared for each and every one of us. Well, what I'm saying today, and, and I'm not saying we can't be patriotic and we can't be thankful for our country, but what I'm saying today is we are citizens of heaven first, only living a temporary life here in America, amen? amen. Citizens of heaven first. You know, I, I think of people from Canada. They have a level of patriotism. They're, they're proud to be Canadians. I think about people born in Mexico. They're proud to be a, a, a member and, and a community member of, of Mexico and a resident of Mexico. And, and I think of America. We're proud to be Americans. Why? Because this is where God has planted our family. This is where God has set our feet up. And, and I want to read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. And I want you to see how Paul describes us as believers today. And, and he says, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests. You are a holy nation. God's very own possession. Are you glad to be God's very own possession today? As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And last week we preached that God snatched you out of the kingdom of darkness. God has set your feet up on the kingdom of God today. Aren't you glad to be out of the darkness and into the light today? Once you had no identity as a people. Now you are God's people. I'm an American. Yes, you are, but you are God's people today. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy and his grace. Dear friends, listen now. He says, I warn you, temporary residents and foreigners. We're temporary residents of this great nation. We, we are foreigners in this great nation as we have been called out by God to be his chosen people. And he says, I want to keep you away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Notice how the word of God identifies us. You see, we serve a global God. I think a lot of times we think of Jesus as this American guy that kind of walked through the streets. He, he was a global Jesus, amen? He, he wasn't probably what you personify in your mind. He was a global Jesus that didn't just come to save America. He came to save the entire world. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But, but Jesus has come, and he has made you a temporary resident of this great nation. And, and not only that, he's made you a chosen people. Well, Pastor Brad, I don't feel like anybody today. Can I tell you, if you've got the blood of Jesus in your heart and you have become a believer, you are chosen today. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident today. You are chosen by God today. He says you're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You are God's possession. You are just a temporary resident and a foreigner here on this land. In other words, this is not my final home. This is only temporary where God has planted me for right now. And if you get that perspective, the reason I'm preaching this message, if you'll get that perspective that no matter how bad our nation might get, no matter how bad the news might get, no matter how bad the politics might get, just remember you're not of this world. You're not of this kingdom. You're of the kingdom of God. And one day when you take your last breath, you will then become a royal citizen of heaven for all of eternity. That's something to get excited about. That's something to encourage your heart with today. That no matter what happens here, it's only temporary. And I thank God for that. I, I have flown out of the country several times to Jamaica as we help start a church there and do some other mission work up in the mountains of Jamaica, and I, I tell you, every time we fly back and we land on American soil, there's a sigh of relief. I love our nation, amen? 
There's just, there's a protection, there's a safety that just kind of, kind of comes over my soul as soon as I know that those tires on that big airplane are on, on the ground. Whew, I'm finally home. I'm finally back in my nation. I love America, and it's the place that God puts on our hearts. And it's okay to be patriotic today, but where does your true allegiance lie? Where, where does it lie? America is our temporary home, but we also need to be reminded today that America is our mission field. Where you are planted is where God wants you to grow into your mission field all around you. You know, there was a, a period of time that America was the number one nation that was sending out missionaries to other countries to spread the word of Jesus and to spread the gospel. Did you know that here in America, there's other countries now sending missionaries here? There's other countries sending missionaries to us to bring about revival. Uh, something's wrong with that church. We need to be birthing revival here as the American church. We need to be sending missionaries out to spread the gospel like we used to. It, it's time to wake up, church. It's time to wake up America, amen? It, it's time to humble ourselves and, and to begin to focus on the things of God and, and I'm going to tell you, and I tell you about every Sunday, we have a work to do. In this community, in this state, in this nation, and in this world, there is a work that needs to be done. Let me give you some shocking stats on the condition of the American evangelical church as we celebrate freedom today. 30% of evangelical Christians today agree that Jesus was a great teacher and prophet, but that he was not really God. That's a problem, church. Bible reading declined by 7% during the first six months of COVID. Less than 10% of sermons preached in evangelical churches even mentioned hell, heaven, sin, or salvation. I I'm going to tell you today that heaven is a place and hell is real, amen? And, and that sin will separate you from God. And that salvation makes you a member today. Salvation is what gets rid of all of that sin in your heart and in your life by the blood of Jesus Christ. 68% of all evangelical churches in the United States have a congregation with less than 100 people attending, including children, and half of those churches have less than 50. 60,000 churches or 20% of all churches in America could close within the next 18 months. Isn't that shocking today to you as an American and as a believer that it should put something deep in our hearts that, hey, I need to step up. Hey, I need to be the church. Hey, as a true patriot, I need to reach out to my nation. I need to reach out to the people that are in my community. There is a work that needs to be done in this great country that we call the United States of America. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 through 38 says when he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd and I want to stop right there because I read that and, and I thought you know how many times have we looked around at people that might not be living exactly like we do that seem to be confused seem to be like sheep without a shepherd and how many times do we judge them how many times do we, we kind of spread some anger and hate towards their way? That's not what Jesus did. He said he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless. Church, today it's time that we start looking at other people that are not believers with some compassion like Jesus did. Because they're confused and helpless. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are are few so pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his field on January 20th 1961 John F Kennedy gave his inaugural address and and there's a quote that has withstood the test of time and I'm sure you've heard it before during that speech he made this statement he said my fellow citizens of the world ask not 
what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. And I'm going to rephrase that today for the church, for you today, and say, my fellow brothers and sisters of the church, ask not what God will do for you, but what together we can do for the spiritual well-being and freedom of mankind today. That's true patriotism. Looking at others and not being so selfish. Serving others. Spreading the word of God. Living like Jesus lived. Acting like he did. Caring like he did. Far too often the American church sits on the sidelines of a nation that was once founded on godly principles. And all we want to do is talk about it. All we want to do is complain about it. Well, I remember when things used to not be this way, and boy, this world's getting ugly. Did you see what was on the news last night? Did you see what was on Facebook? Did you hear what she said about this nation? Oh, it's just terrible. It's just awful. All we do, church, is post on Facebook. All we do is send videos on Facebook Messenger that is complaining about how bad America is. How about... We begin to step up as the church, and we begin to become true patriots of our great country, and we start to have some compassion on the helpless and the confused all around us, and we start to be the church that Jesus has raised up right here in Mattoon in Charleston, Illinois, and we start to reach our brothers and our sisters that are confused and helpless right where we are planted. That's what true patriotism is. It's not just saying, boy, I love America. America, right? You, you see that America and people flying their flags, and, and I love that. I'm patriotic. I, I, I bleed red, white, and blue. I get it. I love America. But if you love America, you should love the people that make up this great nation enough to have compassion on their souls and to tell them about a Jesus that came to save them that came to deliver them, that came to bring them hope in this confusing world that we live in. You are the church. You, you are the American church. You are part of the kingdom of God. And, and here is the pinnacle of my thought today. Here is what true patriotism means to the believer today. Patriotism at its core, its perfect core, is an ultimate commitment to our God with a love for the land, and here it is, and a heart for the people that God has placed in our lives. True patriotism is more than just loving our land. Everybody loves America. There's people in other countries begging to come to America. There's people illegally crossing our borders to get in to our great nation. So everybody loves America. Well, mostly. <laughs> Some countries don't, but we're not going to get in all that. But we love America, right? All right, so that's 100% of us. I don't see anybody sitting here, I just hate this country. I wish I was born in Japan. No, you, you love America. You love our nation. All right, so everybody loves America, but do you love the people that make up America? enough to have compassion on them and to spread the gospel to them you have a you have a job church <laughs> you you have a work that needs to be done I, I can't reach people in our great nation like you can phil i don't have your story i don't have your background i, I don't have any of that but you have a story that's unique to you that people are gravitated towards that have problems within that same message that you've struggled with and I have a circle that I, I can reach. Patrick, you have a circle that you can reach. That's what true patriotism is today, church. It's more than just loving our great nation. It's starting to serve the people and to love the people and to help save the people that make up the United States of America. I want to look at a passage here in Genesis where Abraham understood the importance of true patriotism to God to people, and to his country. And I heard this 
Bible verse as a kid. I've heard it throughout my life, and, and I never even thought of it this way, that Abraham interceded on the behalf of his countrymen because he loved them that much. And it says, the other men turned and headed towards Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. And Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living there in the city. Will you sweep it away and not spare it for their sake? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why? You would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that, God, right? Abraham's saying, should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, if I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham, he thought about it. He's like, eh, I'm not sure I can find 50, God. And so then he came back and he said, since I have begun, let me speak further. Pretty much like, hey, since we've already kind of started on this, since I've already kind of put my neck on the line, God, um, can, can we talk again? Even though I'm dust and even though I'm ashes, even though I'm worthless, right? Suppose there are only 45. <laughs> you know, God, please, if there's only 45 righteous people rather than 50, will you destroy the whole city for lack of the five? And the Lord he agreed. He said, I won't destroy it if you can find 45. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Uh, God, uh, suppose there are only 40. <laughs> and the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of 40. He should have just went all the way to 10. I'm not sure why he just kept going to 5 and 10. I mean, just get it all the way down. Just say, Lord, suppose there's one and it's me. Just, I mean, I'm just being real, God. Just save it for me, okay? All right, so he goes to the sake of 40. God says, yes. Then he goes down to 30 righteous people, and the Lord said, I'll not destroy it if I find 30 people. Verse 31, then Abraham said, since I have dared to speak to you, Lord, I'm in pretty deep now, God. Listen, let me continue. Don't, don't smite me yet. Suppose there's only 20. <laughs> Just 20, God. And the Lord replied, all right, I won't destroy it for the sake of 20 people. And you know this story. And then he, Abraham's like, boy, I'm really, really pushing God's buttons right now. He says, all right, Lord, don't be angry with me. Have you ever done that? You pleaded with somebody like, you just kept coming back and forth to him. You're like, hey, I know I bothered you yesterday, but can, can I have this now? I, man, I hate to ask you this. And he said, suppose only 10 are found. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. And when the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way, and Abraham returned to his tent. He said, God, don't kill them all. God, save them. God, free them. Church today, as he was looking at the people that made up his once great country, he became a true patriot because he began to show compassion towards them. He started to intercede on their behalf, right? An ultimate commitment to God and a love for the people that God has given you is what being a true patriot is today. You see, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, we know that story, had gotten so bad and Abraham sitting there and three angels come up and they begin to converse with him and, and they tell him that they're on their way to deliver judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and what does Abraham do? Oh, don't I could care less about them. Go get them all. <laughs> they're evil. They're wicked. I, I don't like them. I argue with them all the time, and I know they're, they're wrong. Smite them all, God. No, that's not what he said. He, he started to intercede on their behalf. And he starts with 50, and he goes all the way down to 10. That's a true patriot today. He loved God. He loved his country, and he loved his people Abraham was not a guy trying to build his own kingdom. Abraham was a guy that understood the importance of building the kingdom of God today. That is true patriotism. We, we see the book of Nehemiah. It ends up with a prayer. Uh, Nehemiah wrote this prayer at the end of, of the book that they wrote about him. And he pleads with God to forgive the people. And I want you to think about that for a second. As an American 
Christian today, how often do we pray for the people? How often do we intercede on the behalf of others in our lives? How often do we look at the shape of our country and we just start arguing with each other? We, we start arguing politics. We start arguing about how bad it is and how good it is and, and all the rights and the wrongs. What if we, as true Christian patriots today, be, begin to set all of that aside and we would get on our knees for America? We would, we would get on our knees for our community. We would get on our knees for our state. We, we were in a parade yesterday and, and a certain float came by with a certain politician that certain people in Illinois do not like right now. And I'm not going to give his name, but I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. And, and people, and I'm sure some of them were good Christian people, were boo, boo. And I'm standing there like, wow, okay, you know. How about we not boo and how about we get on our knees and say, God, deliver us and deliver the great people and, and, and go from the top to the bottom, God, and begin to be a true patriot of Christ today, interceding for them, asking God to save them and asking God to change their hearts. There's power in our prayers today. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That, that means that if you pray today as a believer, there will be things changed because of your prayer. You can intercede on behalf of your unsaved children. You can intercede on behalf of your parents. You can intercede on behalf of your family, on behalf of people at your job, on behalf of people in your neighborhood. And I truly believe that if you will intercede and become a true American Christian patriot, you will see people brought to Christ. You will see a harvest. See, the Bible says the harvest is plentiful. That means it's stacking up everywhere, but the workers are few. Do you know what happens to a harvest that's not harvested? It's wasted. It dies. It wastes. It's no good. Church today, I'm going to tell you, as a true American Christian today, the harvest is ready. It's been ready, and it's time to not just say, boy, I love our church, and I love God, and I love our nation, faith, family, and friends hanging up on our wall. I love all of that. That's good. I love it too, <laughs> but what are you doing about it? How much do you love it? Do you love it enough like Abraham to intercede on their behalf and beg God, please don't, oh God, please spare my family. Oh, God, please spare my children. Oh, God, please spare my neighbors, people on my job. Another example of a true patriot is Paul. Listen to what he writes in Romans chapter 9. With Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and my Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled, listen now, my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people. For my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. And listen to what Paul says. I, Paul, would be willing to be forever cursed. Cut off from Christ if it would save them. And I'm not asking you to pray to God and ask him to curse you. But do you realize what he, Paul just said? God, I would let myself be cursed and I'd let myself be lost. I'd let myself die and go to devil's hell if I can just figure out a way for my people, my country, my nation, the Jews, to truly know you. That's the type of patriotism today that God is looking, in the Ameri looking for in the American church. That's the type of patriotism and the level of patriotism, not only to your nation, but to God that he wants in your heart today. According to scriptures, you are here from another land. Paul writes in 1 Peter that we read earlier that you're only a temporary resident here in the great nation of America. So why are you here? Why are you here? What's your purpose? What's your mission? What's your vision, sir? I'm going to tell you today, you're here to make a difference. You're a difference maker. Well, I'm an American Christian. Yeah, great. I love that. Fly your flag. 
Read your Bible. But like Paul, like Abraham, like Nehemiah, let's love our people enough to take our patriotism from just talk to walk. And start to have compassion on our neighbors. Start to have compassion on our nation. Well, Brad, it's terrible. I know it is. I mean, I watch the news sometimes. Actually, I don't watch the news anymore. I, I see it on Facebook. It pops up, little stories. I know it's awful. I know sometimes I don't agree with everything that's going on. But rather than get angry, hateful, mean, spiteful, bitter, well, those are fruits of the Spirit, Pastor Brad. No, no, they're not. <laughs> no, you, you read the wrong Bible. All right, I'm just telling you. If you want to be a true patriot today, church, love your nation, but love God and love him enough to fulfill the mission that God has placed right here. You were born here for a reason. I, I had some family up from Tennessee, and they said, oh, Brad, you should move down to Tennessee. It's great down there. So it's a great place to visit, but God has called me here. And, and uh, maybe I don't always like flat land and humidity and, and mosquitoes, and maybe I don't like tornadoes and all that stuff, but God's called me here. And I'm going to grow where I'm planted. And you need to grow where you're planted as a true American patriot today, church. The fields are white to harvest all around our nation. What are we doing? How are we doing with that? It's easy. You need to just step up, step out. Start talking to people. Just start living a life around people that, that shows Jesus and the compassion that he has. Our residence is in America, but as a believer today, we are citizens, and our citizenship is in heaven. And as we prepare to close today, true patriotism is about being thankful for the sacrifices that were made for you and me. Our forefathers, and, and we read throughout history, even though they didn't always get it right, but our forefathers risked their lives for our freedom. The veterans that are in this room and, and even all across the world, the veterans that have fought for our freedom are the reason that we can stand here in, in a church setting and spread the gospel and pray together and sing songs of worship. We live in the freest nation on the planet and i'm thankful for that today but you have the ability in this nation to share the gospel and many of us are not doing that in order to be a true american patriot today it's time to step up and have compassion and grace and love and mercy for our countrymen for our, the women that make up our, our great nation ask not what god can do for you Ask what you can start to do for God to help the people that make up the great nation of America, that make up the great state of Illinois. First Peter 2.9, you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest. You're a holy nation. You're God's very own possession. As a result of being chosen and royal and being God's possession, Here's what you need to do, the Bible says. Show others the goodness of God. Well, I'm chosen, Brad. I'm royal. I'm kind of important in God's book. Yes, you are. But there's another step that you're forgetting. As a result of being chosen, you begin to show others the goodness of God. For he has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I tell you today, my true Independence Day was the day that I found Jesus Christ. And I've never been the same since that day. That's where true independence is found today, church. Independence is found in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. And when I got saved, God placed a deeper love in my heart for this country that I was planted in and for the people of this great country. See, it's great to be a patriot and say, I love America, but do you love the people? And if you say, yes, I love the people in America, then go and show compassion on them and bring them to Jesus. That is what true 
patriotism is today. Let's stand. God wants you to grow right, right where you were planted in the United States, in, in the state of Illinois, in your neighborhood, right here in your school, right in your job. You have a mission as a true patriot. And I'm thankful today that we live in the land of the free and we serve a God that can set us free. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so much. We just pray today for our great nation that hearts would start to turn back to God. And may it start with us. May revival be birthed right in our hearts. And God, as we close today, may you just put some patriotism deep in our heart that is not only proud of America, but God begins to serve the people that make up this great nation. That they would come back to God. Jesus, send workers. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Send them, God. And may we be a true patriot of you. In Jesus' name we pray.